So recently in community, we uh, watched a movie called Brave, if you've ever seen it. Uh, it speaks about a wee girl named Meredith in a Scottish family and the whole situation of uh, her mom wants to organize and arrange suitors for her to uh, marry and so on and so forth. And she's a rebellious kind of a girl uh, who likes shooting arrows and loves the outdoors and isn't really into being uh, a princess. She doesn't really, couldn't really care less about being a princess. She just wants to be a free girl uh, and wants to run around with her locks in daffodils or whatever it is. Okay, good. So, and there's a scene where the various suitors and their families uh, come together and it turns into a kind of a, a friendly battle, but they're still fighting. You know, so they're, they're roaring at each other for different past ills. It's all, it's all it's almost amicable, but still fighting. And on a few occasions in this hubbub, uh, the queen will walk down through the crowd, and when she does, the crowd parts, right? And all of the people baiting each other stop and bow. And no matter how big or burly any of these war Scottish warriors are, she grabs them by the ear and, and drags them all out and calls the place to order. And on a few occasions, you see, it's only, it's only a kid's movie, but this is something I think, I think, I hope, we've all experienced. Uh, and I think for us as men, this is something that we experience as well in the, if you will, the hidden power of woman. <laughs> the hidden power of the woman isn't in muscles. Uh, it's in nobility, that, that closeness to God, that, that kind of dignity with which uh, a woman carries herself really calls a man to more. And even in so many sorry not to be quoting movies, I should be quoting St. Thomas Aquinas or something, but, uh, but when you look at so many movies like where the man will go to every length possible for love of his girlfriend, wife, for the, the, the woman of his dreams, you know, there's, there's nothing that will call a man to action more than love of a woman. And we see in our first reading today from the book of Genesis, everything is created and it's good, and there are plants and animals and shrubs and maybe even celery. It's arguable that could have been a, that could have been a cause of the, uh, a result of the fall. We'll see. But for the moment anyway, all was good. All was good in paradise. Uh, and God said, you know, this man here needs a helpmate. Look at him. I mean, he needs a helpmate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, creation, if you look at how creation, the steps of creation, they get progressively more more complex, right? So God in of, in of himself, theologically speaking, God is simple. He's not composed of things. He's not composed of material. God is, God is simple. The angels don't have a body. They're, they're pure spirit. So they're relatively simple, all things considered, as well. Creation gets more and more complex. Man is then created out of dirt. And then woman is created out of man's rib. That's why women tend to be somewhat prettier than men, because we're created out of dirt, and at least they're created out of something human. So uh, there you are. There's the theological reasoning for that. So then woman is created, and amongst all the animals and everything else going on, woman is very, very different. <laughs> okay? Woman, he, man, Adam, gazes upon woman and says, at last, bone from my bones and flesh from my flesh. Jason Everett, that he argues, Jason Everett argues that when Adam sees uh, Eve, he goes, whoa, man, and that's where we get the word, woman. Um, so she used to be called, whoa, man, uh, for she was taken from man. Okay, and now it goes on and says something kind of interesting in Genesis. This is why man leaves father and mother and joins himself to his wife and they become one body. Why? Sorry, what? Because this kind of comes out of nowhere. She used to be called woman because she was taken from man. This is why a man leaves father and mother and joins himself to his wife, and they become one body. So John Paul II, in his Theology of the Body, would speak about this complementarity of man and woman and how they come together and how their, theologically speaking, their bodies make sense with each other, with each other in this <clears throat> union. So woman calls man to virtue. Woman calls man to virtue. 
courage, selflessness, <clears throat> self-sacrifice. This, this is the divine order, if you will, that women have this, this power <clears throat> to, to call man to, to virtue. I hope it goes the other way as well. I hope we men can call women on to virtue. But when we look at Our Lady, look at Our Lady in, in, in Lourdes, you know, when, when there's such a great need, God doesn't send St. Michael the Archangel with hosts of angels with swords and wings and who knows what to sort things out. He sends his mom. He sends his mother. This humble servant. But because of her beauty, and again, beauty isn't cosmetic. Her beauty comes from her proximity to God, her closeness to God, her oneness with God, the absence of sin. So her beauty is not just, it's not just that she looks pretty. I'm sure she did. I'm sure she does. I'm, all visionaries, all, everyone who's seen her says that words can't describe how beautiful she is. But it's, again, it's not, it's not the fruit of eating healthily. Like, her, her beauty comes from her, her, her closeness to God. And this humble servant comes and when, when people see her then they're simply dumbfounded. They, they, they're transfixed. And they feel called to more. And invariably those who she appears to she does actually call them to more. They receive this grace of, of an apparition. Yeah, and then along with it there are going to be difficulties. Not everyone is going to believe you. Many people will think you are crazy. As we mentioned this morning as well in Lourdes uh, in the ninth apparition of 18 Our Lady asked little Bernadette to drink from a puddle she indicated the, the spot with her finger Bernadette presumes she means the big river behind her so she goes over towards the river and Our Lady says no 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 not the river that spot there and so Bernadette goes over and sees there's a, there's a puddle there now keeping in mind there are lots of locals watching but Our Lady said drink there so I guess I'll drink there. And she puts her hands down to the puddle and it's all mud and the third time there's enough water to possibly drink so she drinks it. And of course, the onlookers don't know what our lady asked her. They didn't see her. They just see this girl going over drinking out of a puddle. And then to top it off, our lady says, and eat grass. Again, you can just imagine all these onlookers because because the apparitions didn't necessarily happen at the same time or because they weren't necessarily consecutive day after day, there, was a, there, there were chunks together, but often there were gaps as well. They would come in the evening and maybe there'd be no apparition. And the following evening, maybe no apparition. And then, then there was an apparition. So they could, they could have been waiting for days. Then they go along and you see this girl drinking out of a puddle eating grass. Like, yes, she saw our lady, and yes, it was a great privilege, but it cost her something as well. It cost her something as well. And so, because of her fidelity, though, because of her obedience, the day after she drank from the puddle, uh, a spring came up and started to flow back towards the river. And this is the spring now, of one of the springs that uh, have now been transformed into the, the legendary baths of Lourdes. A lady came, bathed her arm, and just felt she had internally just felt drawn to just to do this. So she went over to the water, bathed her her arm, which had a uh, a, a deformity in it and, and the arm was, was healed it was the first of many many healings there in Lourdes so Our Lady calls us to virtue I think women in general have this, this vocation to call men to virtue and there's nothing that has more power over a man's heart than love of a woman this unity this dynamic of, of, of calling each other to greater heights of sanctity. This is one of the things that, that got severely damaged by the fall. Our reading tells us, now both of them were naked, the man and his wife, but they felt no shame in front of each other. The man's body didn't lead a woman to sin, and the woman's body didn't lead a man to sin. They could look at each other and see in the beauty of the other's nakedness the reflection of God. They're created in his image and likeness. So the, the beauty of, of the other's body wasn't a temptation to lust, but an invitation to love. So they could see 
the other person's naked body and say, wow, that's beautiful. Thank you, God. You know, it's just, just like little, you know, we've all, unfortunately, probably been horsed into baths with our brothers and sisters when we were, all, when we were kids, you know. Oh, and then why do parents do that? And then they take photos, you know. Then, so then when, you're, when you're 25, they take up the photos of, you know, you as a three-year-old with your brother as a three-year-old and your sister as a five-year-old all in the bath together. Like but you, we, as kids, you can do it because the other person's body doesn't lead you to sin. It's just, it's all so pure. That's how it was before the fall. Adam and Eve, they could look at each other. They felt no shame. As soon as sin enters the world, now this vocation to call each other to greater heights of virtue is now reversed. And now the other person's body leads, or at least the temptation is there, that the, that the other person's body leads you to sin, leads you to lust, leads you away from God rather than to glorify God. So this, 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 this beautiful dynamic that God has created, that man and woman lead each other to God, has now been inverted. So now they lead each other, or at least are tempted to lead each other from God. So, our blessed lady in Lourdes, she shows us the original call of, of woman to lead, to lead men and to lead, indeed lead all back to God. The source and origin of all beauty, of all life. We pray in our world today for a rediscovery of femininity in the most positive and holy way possible. That the realization of femininity isn't just having a career or looking a certain way or weighing or being able to fit into a size, whatever it is, what's small, 12, 10, eight, eight, size eight, all right, whatever. Works differently for us. Uh, but so that's, that's not the goal of it, like, you know, once I can attain this and then I'm happy or uh, successful, that's, that means nothing in God's eyes. We pray that femininity, as God designs it, in all of its beauty, will be rediscovered and treasured, and that it may indeed help renew man's discovery of masculinity. Amen.